Hi there, this is Joanne from TrueAuthenticPower.com from Tapping.me, and I'm also the creator of the program Catapulting to Confidence. So today I want to talk about energy again, as always, but this time I want to ask you a question and have you kind of reflect on what I'm asking. What's got your energy locked up and unavailable? And I want to talk about what beliefs might you be thinking that have stymied you, stopped you, put you into fear, made you pull back, pull in, retreat, say, I can't do that because I'm not capable of doing that because. And the reason I want to talk about the beliefs in this episode is because if you are thinking certain things, they can absolutely help you or block you. And it's kind of interesting because today I was listening to something and it always kind of makes me chuckle because when people don't know energy, they just, they're uninformed. They just don't know that this is right, wrong, indifferent, possible, or what have you. But when people say to me, I do this because I'm Italian, or I heard this phrase of something because I'm Jewish, the Jewish families talk about that, or I will hear the black culture say things like, this happens because we're black. And when I listen to a lot of those phrases, they are more universal than people think. And so I want you to question what you are thinking or believing that's related to you. Like the Italian woman had said to me, oh, we have this extra, you know, dramatic energy and everything is, oh, you know, well, I can point out a lot of people that I know have known in the past or even clients or whatever that have had that same energy of drama attached or, you know, hypersensitive, not hypersensitive, that's the wrong word, um, dramatic, you know, just dramatic in how they express and, oh, and, you know, I mean, uh, that, that goes across cultures. That's not just because you're Italian or the woman who said to me, you know, I don't know what's the matter with Jewish families. Why would you say something like either stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about? Okay, well, I heard that from other families growing up and they weren't Jewish families. Did they go to a certain school to learn these beliefs and these phrases that don't make sense? Or one of my father's things was there was a little ditty song that was something about a little bit added to what you've got makes just a little bit more. And he thought that was a great thing. And I'm thinking, I don't want a little bit. And I don't want to add to just a little bit. I don't want a little bit more. I want abundance. That doesn't fit for me. My point of this story is whatever it is you are thinking that you attach to your generation, to your culture, to your belief, to how you grew up, what you were told, I want you to start questioning those things. Because when you do, you will start uncovering the things that are holding you back, blocking your energy, locking it up, and making it unavailable. So that's the first piece. The second piece I want you to think about is that when you lock energy up from turmoil, trauma, shocks, griefs, accidents, all those kind of shocking trauma things... They hit your energy like a sizzle and start interrupting how your energy is supposed to flow and be easy and be connected like wires connected with different parts of your body to say, okay, this connection over here does this. When you have an accident, a trauma, a shock, a grief, a sadness, something that comes out of the blue, a shocking um uh, response to a conversation that you're having with someone. I mean, it doesn't take a ton, although it can. But when you feel like from that point on, you can still remember that feeling, that shock, that hurt, that pain, that sizzle, and you know things kind of went awry from that point, again, I would say those are the things that have your energy locked up and unavailable for your greatness, for your goodness, to use your gifts and talents. But here's the good news. When you start applying things, I mean, I use EFT and energy frequencies. When you start unlocking those beliefs that have you believing things that aren't true, when you unravel the griefs, the traumas, the shocks, the sadness, it frees up your energy as if you have a surge to say, 
Oh, you mean I don't have to keep bailing the boat because there's a hole in the boat? I can actually take a boat ride? That's the kind of difference I'm talking about. And if you don't know those beliefs are holding you back, I'm here to tell you everybody has them. It's whether or not how severe they are or whether or not you even know that they're there. So the things that you often think that you often say, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm, you know, I can't do this, I'm not smart enough, I'm telling you those are beliefs that are learned. You didn't come into the world saying, I'm a piece of crap and I don't have this capability. It just doesn't, you can pick up energy in the womb though, I will say, you can even pick up energy that's not yours at conception. But my point is the majority of things are taught and they're usually taught before the age of seven and they become so rote, so ingrained, so automatic that you believe that that's part of your world, part of what your experience is going to be, whether you're a certain culture or a certain religion or a, you know, male, female, it doesn't matter. What matters is I'm suggesting to you to start questioning what it is you're believing. Okay, so then you know what you're believing and you might say, is that really true? Well, it feels true. Feeling true doesn't mean that it's true. It means it's been your experience. You've really learned it. You believe it's true, but that doesn't mean it can't be changed. And how do you do that? Well, I use EFT with clients. And when you start to free up that energy, you will say to yourself at a later time, what the heck was I thinking? Because it's so obvious of why that was in your way. But when you're in it or you're feeling emotional upset or turmoil or shocks or trauma, you can't, you can't rationalize through that. It's not a rational thing. It's hit your energy. It's hit your subconscious mind. It's hit you in ways that are, oh my gosh, over the top interrupting of your energy. When you're in that, you can't think clearly. You're not going to see it clearly. You're going to take it as well, this is the way life is. Yeah, well, I can tell you I've worked with a lot of people who afterwards said, this wasn't true at all. I, how the heck did I pick up that crazy belief? You learned it. And it's almost like you learn things through osmosis. If it's in your energy growing up around you, if you're hearing people express that kind of experience, express those kind of beliefs, you take it on. It's not like anybody wants to teach you something detrimental. It's not that they want to teach you things that will screw up your life or inhibit your growth or your creative abundance. It's not like anybody on purpose necessarily, well, there are some people that want to hurt people, but I'm saying generally, that's not how it happens. It happens through osmosis of being around people speaking the incorrect beliefs. That's how generational downloads happen. That's how families learn the same illness patterns. They learn the same beliefs about abundance. They learn the same beliefs about love. If you look at family dynamics, they tend to pass on everything that they've learned. Correct, incorrect, good, bad, serves you, doesn't serve you. It's not even about that. It's just incorrect learning. Question your beliefs. Question what it is you're thinking. Who taught you that? Why would you think that you're not worthy or deserving? Why would you assume that that kind of abundance or love or ease in life can't be yours? Something taught you that. I want you to question those things because when you free that up from your energy or your belief system, a lot of things can open up that work for you, that come out of the blue. I've seen it so many times. I've experienced it. I know, I know that it's not even just possible. It's likely when you start shaking up your energy, you start getting to those core beliefs, miracles can start happening. And that may sound over the top for some people who don't know energy, or you may think that I'm, you know, trying to sell you a song here. I'm telling you, I have seen it happen so many times. It's not even a question for me. Never, it hasn't been a question in a long time. If you're trying to unlock your energy, one of the things that I hear people say a lot, and it frustrates me because it is detrimental. My opinion from what I've seen working with energy and working with beliefs and human beings is some people just want to be a certain way regardless of what they've gone through. And I'm talking about people like, hmm, uh, well, 
there are certain religions that just want to come off as good-hearted people, and yet they're seething underneath with pain that they're trying to look the other way. They're trying to be something, but yet their energy is resonating with turmoil and trouble, even hatred, revenge thoughts. Those are all human things. Whether or not you take them out on somebody else is a whole different story, and that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, what goes on in your head, whether you speak it out loud or not, that is vibrating in your energy, and it's also broadcasting out to people in and around you. I'm not, hear me when I say this, I am not talking about revenge on someone. I am not talking about hatred and spewing it on someone. I'm talking about if you have any of those kind of frustrated beliefs, hatred beliefs, you are so angry, so hurt, so devastated by something that your mind is having those thoughts. Haven't you heard of some people saying they have such intrusive thoughts? I mean, that's part of OCD. That's part of you know, your energy is stuck there. Something got your energy stuck there. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but if you're going to ignore it, not look at the energy behind it, not look at the beliefs or what happened that caused that sizzle that is now creating that, if you want to just go on to happy, joyful, forgiveness, love, and, you know, peaches and cream, good luck. Because somewhere along the line, I would almost say for most people, maybe not all, but for most people, that's who I see in my office. A lot of people are trying to gloss over or people who have gotten newly into spirituality or, you know, Christianity or whatever. They want to be all about love. And while that's all fine and good, if you've got rotting sewage underneath that love, what do you think is going to win out eventually? Most of the time, it's going to be the rotting sewage because you can't put perfume on shit. Sorry, maybe some people can, and maybe some people can transform in other ways. But I hear in groups about the stuff that's going on underneath that they're trying to hide. I hear about emotions that are screaming at people that they're trying to outrun. Maybe if I go to a different relationship, maybe if I move out of town, maybe if I move away from my family. There was an incident, not an incident, but a story that I heard in one of the groups, and this woman was very frustrated and she said, I've got all these neighbors around me that are so mean, that are so nasty. They pick at everything. They find fault with everything. I love our house. I want to stay here, but I can't stand our neighbors. Help me with this. And it was a manifestation group. And then a little bit into the story, all she had to say was, I moved away from my toxic family. Bingo, right there. Just because you move away does not mean you have gotten that energy, that anger, that frustration, the hurt, the pain, the sorrow, the suffering, the betrayal out of your energy. You just physically moved away. And what your energy is broadcasting is attracting those same kind of energetic vibrations around you. But now it's just coming up in the form of neighbors. You are not going to most likely outrun your energy. I'm not saying across the board ever, but the people that I work with have never been able to outrun their energy. Let me just suffice it to say that. The clients that I've worked with for all of these years since 2009 of being a coach have never been able to outrun their energy. They take it with them and the same thing starts manifesting and they say, what the heck? Well, let me try this job over here. Let me try this love over here. Sometimes it will, it will change. Sometimes. The majority of time, I hear a lot of frustration. Why do I keep procrastinating? Why can't I find the love that I'm seeking? Why is my family such a bunch of deadheads or frustrating people or people that hurt me? Why, 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 why? You're carrying some kind of energy that was learned, got stuck, is still in your energy, and you're trying to outrun it. My advice is to work through it. And it doesn't have to take a long time. And it doesn't matter how long it's been with you or how old you are. When you reach for the core of the situation, and you need some help doing that, especially for newbies, even for experienced people, because when you're in the emotional upset of things or the traumatic outcome of what's happened, you're not going to see your stuff clearly. That goes for any of us. And I'm talking, I'm an experienced coach. I do this for a living. I educate other people on how to do all this stuff. But when I'm in my stuff, it's, it's foggy because I'm reacting to the emotion of it. I'm reacting to the energy of it. And something is out of sync, which means I can't see the path always clearly. 
I may have some inkling, but there's a different way to get to clearing things that you just don't have the resources when you're in it like you do when you're an experienced energy coach and you can, I mean, it, it just becomes so clear of what you see clients doing and, and how to get to the roots of it. Again, I would say, so what's got your energy locked up and unavailable? If you're trying to look past the hurts, the pains, the suffering, the abandonments, name the negativity of what you've been through. If you're trying to look the other way, normally, oftentimes what happens is a trauma will build on the next trauma, will build on the next trauma. And it's like you've got an antenna up for all the crap that feels exactly like that beginning interruption. That's the power of energy. The good news is, though, that once you start breaking that cycle, that you start dissolving those attachments in the beliefs that you think that are working against you, processing the emotions of the traumas or accidents or whatever shocked your system so that it's gotten it interrupted and pulling in things that don't work for you, when you start just getting to the roots of that and pulling some of that stuff out, it's amazing how the energy that has been locked up and unavailable for your dreams, for your goals, for your ambitions, your energy level, all of those things start coming to life. It's never about, it's your age, it's something you just have to live with. I mean, does everything change? I can't say that across the board, and I'm not claiming to heal, diagnose, or cure anything. What I'm talking about is when your energy is locked up, you are suppressing your gifts and talents. You are suppressing what can actually bring abundance to you. You are suppressing a positive outward broadcast that comes from your energy that speaks to the world out and around you. It's the same thing as that woman who said, I moved away from my toxic family thinking that's the fix. Well, guess what? That's not the fix. She's still carrying the hurts, the pains, the suffering, the betrayal, all of those, oh, angst, all that disruption. She's still carrying that with her no matter where she goes. That's why it's still pulling in. And the universe and the energy around her is saying, okay, you moved away, but um, guess what? It's still here. And now we've moved it into neighbors because you've got to do the cleanup. Well, you don't have to do anything. You can make a choice and just kind of live and suffer. But when you get to the flow of how your energy can be unlocked and opened up, and you'd be amazed at what can happen. If you're in business, clients can show up out of the blue with no effort. I, I mean, it's freaky how this stuff happens, but it happens. Money can show up out of the blue. Love relationships, people out of the blue that you thought you'd never talk to or hear from again show up. It's just because you're releasing that suppression, that how you've held yourself down, how the beliefs have held yourself down, how your emotions have held you down. It's just that's why I do these audios. Whether you ever have any interaction with me or not, whether you ever buy a single product that I sell or not, whether you ever connect with me or not, I just want people to understand that you may be suffering a great deal of suffering because your energy is locked up and you don't have the tools or know that it's even possible to unravel that and to release it and to get your flow with all the right wire connections inside, because you're an energy being. Everything works on an energy field, whether you know that or not. And if you don't know that, you might want to do some education, because we are an energy being. And when the energy gets interrupted or takes a sizzle or a hit in whatever way that it does or can, it can so suppress you and what's good about you and how you can relate to the world. My hope is that the more that I do these kind of talks and explanation, giving stories and examples, you will hear some of what you're doing that could be holding you back and that there's a solution. That's my hope. I want to reach as many people as I can just because I suffered for a long time. Part one of my life was about the beliefs that held me back and I didn't know any of this stuff. And then I had a second phase, which was full of trauma and illness and suffering of my family members and death and dying and just 
way over the top. You talk about putting out a fire after a fire after a fire after a fire. Oh, my goodness, it was horrible. Talk about energy interruption. Oh, my goodness. And it was built on I hadn't gotten rid of the beliefs yet. So now I'm in crisis of my world feels like it's come to a complete standstill. I'm a nervous wreck with all this anxiety because I've got beliefs that are working against me. I've got traumas and tribulations that are so gigantic working against me. My mind, body, and spirit felt dead. Like I can't even function. I'm so exhausted from the emotional drain. I know there, there's a solution to that because I've worked through it. I've gotten through it. I've helped a lot of other people get through it too. So that's my wish for you. If this interests you, if you want to learn more about how to get your energy to work for you instead of against you, I tell these kind of stories. I share these kind of audio videos so that people can learn. There are a lot of people suffering and I hear it all the time when I know that if they can just work with their energy and free some of that up, their life could change dramatically for the better. And I'm wishing that for you. If you want to learn more about this, Sign up, put the alert on when you subscribe so that you can get new videos when I do these audio videos. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, sometimes I actually will do a video addressing something that someone writes to me. So if that interests you, you can always sign up on my website, trueauthenticpower.com. Send me a question. I might just answer it through a video and keep it clean and nice, will you? (laughs) Just a caveat there, you know. Go to somebody else if you want to be mean and nasty. So until our paths cross again, I hope this helps you in some way. And um, here's to your true authentic power. Bye-bye for now.